My name is Ken Bell. I was the sports director at ABC6 in Providence for 35 years, and I serve on the advisory board for Athletes in Action in New England. And I'm joined by Walt Day. Walt is also with Athletes in Action. He's the pro sports ministry leader in New England. Walt, you served as chaplain for both the Red Sox and the Patriots over a 13-year period. Had to be a meaningful time for you. Yeah, it was a fun time for me to be able to combine that uh, the pro sports I always enjoyed with the spiritual dimension. A certain number of players come to faith. A lot of them had a big impact in the in the city and around the town. So. That was a great time for and me. And you were behind the scenes for five world championships between the Red Sox yeah, and that, Patriots. Yeah, that was quite a privilege to do that too. And now, Walt, you spend your time encouraging athletes in pro sports uh, in Boston. And we have one athlete here who really has a great story to tell because of his community involvement. Right, yeah, we have Teal Bunbury uh, joining us with us today. He's the star forward for the New England Revolution. And uh, Teal, you may not know, was the uh, 2010 Herman Award winner. So that's the uh, most outstanding college uh, soccer player in the country. And he won that coming out of college. It was the first round draft pick into Kansas City and the MLS and traded to the Revolution. And we've gotten pretty close over the last couple of years. So welcome, Teal. Glad to have you with us this morning. Hey, Walt and Ken. Um, pleasure to be here. Thank you so much for this opportunity and uh, excited to share a little bit about myself and uh, I guess my story. And you're still kicking. Yeah. yeah. Despite still kicking. the pandemic, you're still kicking. <laughs> still kicking, most definitely. So, well, speaking of that, so you guys are uh, heading off to Orlando pretty soon. It looks like you might be the first uh, teams back on the field. Yeah, yeah. So it's been kind of a long process and uh, we just uh, kind of got it squared away with the league that we're going to have this tournament down in Orlando. And all the teams can start reporting there on June 24th at the earliest. Um, and we're going to be partnering up with ESPN and the wide world of sports down there uh, to have a little tournament that I think is going to be really exciting for fans, um, that we can get the product back on the field, have that fan engagement. Uh, it's been a long time, so it's, it's been tough dealing with this. We want to make sure that we're, you know, being safe and smart. Um, but getting back to doing something we all love is, is really important and we're excited. Yeah, I think it's going to be exciting. I think the guys are going to be pretty hyped up when they're back in the field. we got a, a quick clip from the early days of the revolution. This is a great goal we're going to turn to here. And, folks, this is, uh, I think, you'll enjoy the games down in Orlando if you get a chance to watch. So let's uh, take a quick watch at this uh, clip here. Bunbury dances his way past the Yango Tia. Bunbury! What a goal! What a start for New England! Well, that, that was a great goal there, Teal. And um, so uh, getting back to the personal side a little bit, you uh, became a dad again recently. Yeah, so we had our, our second baby girl who was born uh, February 24th. Uh, she's almost three months now, or a little over three months. And uh, she's just growing every day. And we have a two-and-a-half-year-old. Uh, so our two-and-a-half-year-old is named Sienna. Our three-and-a-half-month-old is named Shay. Um, and uh, they're just... Uh, the joy of my heart, and they're growing every day, and uh, really exciting. Well, you've been getting a lot of time with them recently, right? So uh, I'll, I'll be keeping you busy. Yeah, yeah. So the, the silver lining during this uh, kind of crazy time is that I've been able to spend the first few months with a newborn. Well, usually I'm kind of off in preseason, or I, I'm on the road a lot. So to be able to help out my wife in that way, uh, and just be available and see her grow, because at this young age, they grow so quickly. And uh, so it's been a lot of fun for me. Right, yeah, they're as cute as can be. And uh, I've just been impressed with the way you carry yourself, uh, the way you're going about being a dad and a husband and getting to know your wife, Katie. And uh, could you share a little bit how your relationship with God, with Christ, has uh, helped you uh, as a father and a husband, how, how it plays out for you? Yeah, I think first and foremost, uh, you know, being a Christ follower and, and diving into his word and getting a better understanding of how I'm supposed to be a leader, a spiritual leader in my household. As a husband, I believe first to to show my daughters how they should be treated once they get old enough, but to make sure I'm always there available uh, for my wife and my kids being selfless. Uh, even if I'm tired coming home from training, uh, I think Christ gives me the strength to to want to make sure I'm a, I'm a good role model for them and showing them how to live a uh, spiritual life, spiritual filled life. And I think it growing for me spiritually, I'm able to pass that on to them and uh, i know they're still young but even the other day we we've been 
streaming church on Sundays and Sienna knows that we finish breakfast and she's like time for church, you know, she's already saying stuff like that. So I'm hoping it's something they can see in me as being a a role model and making sure that, you know, I'm held accountable to do that in in my household. This is our father's day uh, week special here. So I think you're, you've done a great example of setting that for us. So thanks for uh, sharing how, how that, how that goes about in your household. So, um, uh, could you briefly uh, tell us a little, stepping back a little bit, tell us how you came to Christ? Yeah, I mean, it was uh, my freshman year in uh, in college, which was about 2008, fall of 2008, spring of 2009. Um, but when I first got to college, this uh, teammate of mine, Steve Zakawani, who ended up going on to play in the MLS, really talented player. Uh, I look up to him as, you know, a mentor now, big brother. Um, but I got to, to college and it, I didn't really know who Christ was. I didn't, I, I had heard about God and I would pray occasionally, but I, I felt something missing in my life and, and I didn't know exactly what that was. But he was someone who was always positive, always able to emulate um, that he could get through anything, whether it was, you know, I went to school in Ohio and the weather there was awful, uh, especially during winter time. So um, when it'd be really cold and whatnot, everybody had these miserable looks and he would always be there, you know, smiling and positive and, one time after a game, we were on a bus ride home and I'm like, hey, like, what, what is it with you? You know, there's something different about you. And uh, I want to know what that is. And right then and there, he, he told me about Jesus Christ and how he died on the cross for our sins. And how if you believe in your heart, confess with your mouth that uh, Jesus is Lord, um, you can accept him right there and then. Uh, and, and the biggest thing I took away, though, is that it's a relationship. And that's something I could understand of having friendships, having my parents, uh, being a, a brother, um, I knew about how to have a relationship and it's a growing process and a journey. Uh, but now I continue to strive to be a better Christian in the terms of following Christ and growing in my relationship with him. Well, thank you, Teal. That, that's encouraging to hear. And so now that you, uh, it's been several years later, what, how do you go about your own growth in that walk with God? What are some of the things you do to, to grow in your relationship with Christ? Yeah, it's um, it's a, it's an everyday occurrence where I, for me, I like to have quiet time uh, as much as I can. It's a little harder when you have you know two little girls kind of running around a little bit, but I try to make that time early in the morning to have prayer. Um, the Bible app is like my best friend, especially on the road. Um, but trying to have that quiet time, trying to read scripture. One of the biggest things is that we have our Bible study, and uh, we have three or four guys, maybe even five guys, usually on the team, that we can. Uh, just have discussions once a week, and uh, we could dive into his word. We can read different books written by great authors um, and have open discussion. Uh, and I think it's been a lot about spending time with him, reading his word, um, and just trying to worship. And I think doing that with with you, it's it's been great. Um, we've also been trying to give back and uh, do certain outreaches and and try to help those that are in need. Great. Yeah, so you've... Um really understood and bought into the idea of discipleship and really growing as to be a disciple of Christ, you would say? Yeah, most definitely. I, I think that's what uh, Jesus wants us to do is to be uh, fishers of men. And, and I want to learn as much as I can and, um, and also be able to find others that I can show what I've learned through Christ. And I think that's one of the most important things in life right now is to figure out what your purpose is. And I think my purpose is to learn his word and be able to use whether it's my platform or just someone who's open um, that I'm ready and I'm available to help them come to Christ. Well, thanks. And you've also done a great job. You've really been uh, tireless in your efforts in the community. So I really appreciate that. So we're really thankful you could come here and be with us today. We want to wish you well down in Orlando. I encourage people to uh, check out Teal and the rest of the revolution as they're uh, starting off getting our teams back on the field. Thanks, Teal. Thanks, Walt. Thanks, Ken. Appreciate it. Thanks, Teal. God bless you. Yeah, you as well.